Hello and welcome to OpenCV Basics. I'm George and in this video we're going to take a look at the DFT. This is going to be the first part of several videos where we explore not only taking the DFT, visualizing the DFT, and then of course inverting it to get our original image back. Now I'm assuming you have knowledge about what a DFT actually is. We're not going to be covering the theoretical background. We're just going to talk about how to take the DFT in, in OpenCV and uh, the special things we need to do to make sure it well, basically is processed properly and we get results that make sense. The first thing we need, of course, is an image to work with. I'm going to click on my project, go to Open Folder and File Explorer, and make sure that I have an image to work with. In this case, it's me.jpg as usual. So let's make a new mat object, just call it me, is equal to, actually, let's call it original, is equal to I am read. I am read, we are going to of course load me.jpg and we're going to use cv underscore load image underscore grayscale. The reason we're doing grayscale is because that's actually the only thing you can take the DFT of. If you want to take the DFT of a color image, what you have to do is split up all the channels into individual grayscale matte objects and then take the DFT of each one individually. So if you can do it for a grayscale image, you can do it for a color image. It just requires doing it three times instead of once. We're going to need to do some prep work before we can take the DFT. And the DFT is actually incredibly easy. It's just DFT and then parentheses and then passing an input array, an output array, and some flags. Now, it's important for us to set up our data properly to begin with. We want to use floating point values. Therefore, we want our, the range of our values to be between 0 and 1. Right now, we're dealing with grayscale images of unsigned integer type 8. Therefore, our values are going to be between 0 and 255. So let's do a conversion. So we're going to type in mat original float. That's our output. And we're going to call original dot convert to. In here, our output array is original float. The type is going to be of CV underscore 32 F or FC for channel or FC1 once again for a single channel. The next parameter is where we get a chance to normalize our values. Here we're going to do 1.0 divided by 255.0. Hopefully this makes perfect sense. If we want our values that range between 0 and 255 to be renormalized or normalized to the range of 0 and 1, we need to make sure we divide each one by 255, which is exactly what we're doing here. Now that we have the floating point version, we can actually go ahead and take the DFT. Well, not quite yet. The DFT requires that we actually have a very special kind of object. The DFT is going to produce a complex answer, meaning it's going to have both a real and imaginary component. Therefore, we actually need a matte object that can hold both real and imaginary components. OpenCV is able to do this by having two channels in the matte object. The first channel is for the real component, and the second channel is going to be specifically for the imaginary component. Right now, all we have is a matte object with a single channel. So let's go ahead and now create a matte object capable of holding that information. So let's do mat, let's call this uh, uh, original complex. To do this, we're going to create an array of size two, and we're going to go ahead and use the merge command, which we talked about before, to take two separate floating point arrays and combine them into a single one with two channels. So now we have to initialize this array. So the first thing we're going to do is use our original float. Now the second component is going to be composed of all zeros. We're going to do a mat colon colon zeros. Inside of here we specify the size, which is going to be the same as original float dot size. And we specify the type, which once again is cv underscore 32 f. Now that we have two mat objects, we need to merge them into a single one, producing two channels. So let's do merge. Our input array is going to be original complex. We have two channels or two arrays that are going to become two channels. And now our destination. We're going to call this original complex. Mm, eh, that's a horrible name. Let's just call this DFT ready. Much better name. Of course, we need to create that object DFT ready. Okay. And that's it. All we now need to do is take the DFT, which is incredibly simple. A lot of setup for such a simple thing. Just type DFT. We pass in our input array, which is going to be DFT ready. Then of course we have an output array, which I guess I'll call um, DFT of original. And then we have our flags. 
the flags are very important. Uh, the DFT function can be used not only to take the DFT, but also take the inverse DFT based upon how you use these flags. These flags can also be bitwise ORed together to make more complicated processing of your DFT. In our particular case, nothing crazy, nothing complicated. We're just going to type DFT underscore to see all the different types. Now you can't see them all on the screen because IntelliSense is all over the place. Actually, hold on a second. Let me see if I can't scroll this down. DFT underscore, there we are. We want to do the complex output. That is, we've taken a lot of effort to make sure that we can contain both a real and an imaginary component. We want to make sure that we do. So we're going to use DFT complex output. And that's it. Besides, of course, Matt DFT of original. There we are. So not a whole lot going on here. Now we can't yet visualize the DFT. The DFT has, well, it's, it's, it's complicated. <laughs> Literally it's complex, but it also has ranges that vary wildly way beyond zero to one. We're actually going to have to do quite a bit of work just to be able to view this in an image. And that's actually going to be the topic of the next video. But before we get to there, let's just make sure everything functions. Go ahead and hit run. Everything ran, nothing bombed out no build errors, everything's good. So I'll catch you in the next video where we take a look at how to actually visualize the DFT in OpenCV.